Hey, my name's Justin, and this is The Art of Repair. Today, I'm going to teach you not one, but two different ways to do proper component orientation for your board work. So let's go ahead and jump on in there and take a look and see what we got going on today. All right. Now, I'm going to be perfectly honest. Um, both of these methods, they take seconds. I'm talking about like they are extremely quick. So this video might not be the longest today, but the information that you're going to get from this, especially if you don't know it, is going to be very powerful information. So make sure that you're paying attention because this one's going to save your butt. All right. Um, to properly find out the component orientation of a BGA chip, all you need to do is find this little dot. Okay. Every single chip has either a little dot on this side or directly on the other side in the corner that gives you the direction in which the chip needs to go. Now, which direction is that? It would be in the direction of pin one. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump over to a board view and let me show you what I'm talking about. What is pin one? This right here is pin one. It's gonna be in a different spot every time. In fact, let's call it alpha one because you can see right here it's pin A1. This is the first pin in the BGA array, technically, okay? But more importantly, this is the one that that other dot on the other side of the chip is supposed to face, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch between the microscope camera and this in the board view so you can see what I'm talking about. See the dot, see the pin, see the dot, see the pin. At this point, I'm hoping that you're inferring that that dot and this pin need to be facing the same direction, okay? As long as that first pin, the A1 pin, is the same direction as your, your orientation dot on the other side, you are good to go. No more pictures, none of that, okay? This is gonna be something that you're gonna be able to do on the fly, extra quick, and you're not gonna have to memorize where it was before you did the work or anything like that. In fact, if somebody hands you a board that just doesn't have the chip on it, you might even be able to find which way it goes now, all right? So again, like I said, these methods are not very you know, time consuming and they're not really hard to explain. So this video might be a little short today, but again, like I said, there also is a second method, okay? The second method is triangulating it through ground, okay? Now, in terms of ground in a BGA array, just in general, normally it's not symmetrical. You're not gonna find the exact same uh, like pins all the way across matching up where you could flip the chip over and it would be the same. In terms of ground, I'm literally only talking about ground. I'm not talking about any of the other pins right now. We are only using ground to triangulate the chip's orientation, okay? So with that being said, let's go ahead and hit the ground plane on here. Let's see, I think, let's see what we got here. I think that was our ground plane right there. Yep, that's it, right there. So, if we know this is ground, and just by observing this image, we can see that it is not symmetrical, meaning if the chip was flipped, the ground would not be the same, okay? So, you can take your multimeter and your probe, you can go down on the board, and you can actually see here which ones are ground. You don't actually have to test that because you know it's in your board view. Now, you could test it, you know, if you wanted, but generally the board view is not gonna, you know, lead you wrong on that. Uh, what the board view might lead you wrong on is what the pin names are, okay? Which is why this technique is very important. Sometimes you may come across erroneous information and, you know, sucks to suck if you put that chip on wrong just because of bad information. You might think that you messed up the repair when really it was just wrong information, okay? So if you ever feel like you have wrong information, this next technique is really going to help. So how do we do it? We see ground right here. We're gonna go back to the chip, and we're gonna flip it over, okay? All we're gonna do is try and match up the ground pins on here to what we saw on the board view. Once we do that, we'll be able to orientate the chip correctly on our own to go in the correct spot, okay? So, let's get our multimeter out here. We've got our beep continuity going. Let's see what we got here. Let's see how this works. So we're gonna touch the first pin here. Go 
Nothing. How about that? Not a thing. Let's start on the other side. What's that? It's ground. Ground. Nothing. Now, again, I hope that you guys can infer this very quickly because it's a very easy concept. If we switch back to the board view and we see that ground is here, here, and here, and we saw that the reverse of that was here, here, and here, then we know that all we've got to do is flip the chip over and we're back to proper orientation, okay? This can be used on pretty much anything. With respect to polarity, this can be used on just about anything. You can use it on FPC connectors, you can use it on BGA chips, I mean, you can use it on all types of components, okay? I think this is a very important tool to have in your bag just because the more you understand something, the better you are at it. So that's two different methods to find proper component orientation. The first one based on pin one, which is an industry standard method. That is how it is built into the board. They did it like that on purpose so that they could find pin one and orientate the chip correctly. And then you had method two, which is ground triangulation. All you're doing then is taking the ground plane on the board view and matching it up with the chip so that even if you don't know what pin one is, since ground is going to be non-symmetrical, you should be able to, you know, figure it out from that point, okay? So, you know, like I said, today is not going to be a long video, but it's going to be a powerful video. So I really hope you learned something today. And remember, my name's Justin, and this is The Art of Repair. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and, you know, whenever you hit that subscribe button, don't forget to slide on over and hit those notifications because that's going to tell you when I upload stuff. It's not enough just to subscribe anymore, apparently. So subscriptions don't actually mean you're, I don't know, I don't know. Either way, I really hope you learned something. I'll catch you next time.